Hello, let's understand control charts, which are a very important part of Lean Six Sigma and very popular even outside it. Dr. Walter Andrew Schubert of the Bell Laboratories developed the SPC charts or control charts in 1920s. Control charts, also known as Schubert charts or process behavior charts in statistical process control are tools used to determine if a manufacturing or a business process is in a state of statistical control. Control charts are extension of run charts, which include statistically generated upper and lower control limits. For variable charts, control charts are almost always prepared and analyzed in pairs. One chart for measuring variability between the groups and another for measuring variability within the groups. For attribute data, the control charts track the count of number of defectives or defects. Why use control charts? Control charts provide a graphical statement of whether a process has been operating in a state of statistical control and to signal the presence of special cause variation so that corrective actions can be initiated. Business processes are constantly building control charts to graphically measure and analyze their business process performance. Usage of advanced options through tools like Minitab can help extend the ability of control charts. Once you set out to understand control charts, it is important to understand the terms of specification limit and control limit. Specification limits are mostly given to us by a customer, and this may be one-sided or two-sided. Sometimes the specification limits are self-imposed. As a part of your offering, you may give yourself some specification for performance. Several regulators or law of the land can also specify acceptance tolerance. Area outside the specification are your failure areas. Control limits are decided by the data itself. You collect data and your upper control limit and lower control limit are calculated from the data itself. Control limits are not provided by the customer and they represent process performance. Control charts only talk about control limits unless you have artificially introduced the upper specification limit and lower specification limit. Control charts do not consider the USL and the LSL. Control charts are based on UCL or upper control limit and lower control limit. Control charts only use control limits. Specification limits are not considered while you are making control charts. This perhaps is one of the greatest limitations of control charts. Unless you artificially introduce specification limits, control charts assess process performance vis-a-vis -vis control limits only. Control charts only verify whether your process is performing in a state of statistical control. Whether that statistical control is meeting the customer requirement or not is out of the purview of control charts. Let me repeat that. Control charts only use control limits. Specification limits are not an inbuilt capability of control charts. You may artificially introduce specification limits. To understand control charts, one must understand concept of common cause and special cause variation. Any variation in the business process which lies within the UCL and the LCL is considered to be driven by common cause variation, while any data point going outside the UCL LCL is considered to be driven by special cause variation, also referred to as assignable cause variation. One must study the cause behind such behavior of data and root cause analysis must be done. If the special cause is not prevented, process 
may shift towards the area where you have special cause variation. Any process variation which fits between the UCL LCL is common cause. Whenever a data exceeds the control limits, it is said to be driven by special cause variation, also referred to as common cause variation. Root cause analysis must be conducted along with the subject matter expert of that business to understand the causality and corrective actions must be implemented. Otherwise, the process is likely to shift towards the area where you have recurrence of special cause variation. While you make control charts, there are two types of errors which are possible. One referred to as a type 1 error, the other referred to as a type 2 error. Statistically, rejecting the null hypothesis when in fact it is true is referred to as a type 1 error, while a type 2 error is rejecting the alternate hypothesis or failing to reject the null hypothesis when in fact it is not true is the type 2 error. So while you make control charts and you concluded that the process is out of control, that there are assignable variations present, when in fact it was a false alarm, this shall be referred to as a type 1 error. While a type 2 error will be that you fail to detect a change in the process even though assignable variation is present. So you've not had an alarm. That would be the type 2 error. There are several patterns and trends that one can study when using control charts or otherwise. A process is in state of statistical control if it exhibits random variation or common cause variation is present around the central line. Clusters are patterns characterized by all or most of similar measurements grouped closely together, caused by a factor entering a process, causing a sudden short-lived change. The potential sources could be new hires or numerous vacations or system crashes or seasonal effects, etc. So when you have similar measurements grouped closely together, that pattern is referred to as cluster. The third, mixture. A mixture is characterized by values grouped near both the control limits with a gap at the central line. Caused when two populations from different averages are produced simultaneously essentially pointing towards two population in the same population. And the potential sources could be two or more different processes, mixtures of different kinds of invoices, data from different offices or customers, or non-random sampling. Next is when you consider data as unstable. An unstable pattern is characterized by unpredictable or frequent shifts. The chart goes out of control periodically and then comes back into control indicates that the process may need to be broken down into smaller segments. Potential sources could be manual process dependent on skill of individual or lack of procedures or standardization, or you have untrained professional, you have high turnover, such things could lead to unstable processes. Next pattern is the stratified pattern. A stratified pattern is characterized by a pattern that unnaturally hugs the central line with no point even occasionally approaching the control limit. This indicates a population consisting of wide variety of distributions. But the potential causes could be multiple processes that exist within the same subgroup. And the next pattern that we are studying, the systematic variable. This is characterized by predictable pattern. For example, a low always followed by a high. Potential sources could be shift differences, consistent variation in workload by the day of the week, consistent sequence in which orders or invoices are processed. Thank you.